Alright guys, Tantra Corbett back again today. Hope you are all doing well and enjoying your day so far and a few entertaining topics to run through today. Yesterday there were some scrim sets between Optic Chicago and the Dallas Empire. Always intriguing to look how those are going. We're going to be running through those in just a few minutes time here. But of course, Crim6 over at the Dallas Empire a couple of days ago was in an 8 series with Atlanta Phase substitute Sib. And well, things got relatively heated when Sib was supposedly switching guns, which you're not meant to do on Garrison Hardpoint. Enjoy to hear your thoughts in the comment section below on all this stuff. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you and you as always I'd greatly appreciate it really helps out the channel thank you very much indeed for doing that let's hop into things then firstly then subliners confirm the third player on their subliners academy for the upcoming season that is going to be Sparta I think Diamond Con and Prolut have already been confirmed Saints I believe might be next up onto this lineup we will just have to see how things go going forward but maybe there will there's certainly going to be some opportunity to get into this starting team with Hydra looking a little bit questionable how long is it going to take him to get out there to the states and also right now they're running with Diamond Con in the starting team for well the subliners given Zuma stepped out a couple of weeks ago now but um, well there's a big question mark about whether that is the long-term solution for this squad so what will they do going forwards we'll have to keep an eye on it one of the options we did talk about potentially was John if he's even allowed to come into this team and uh, well that's a big question mark right now so yesterday we said okay he's playing with Aches, Morks and Lacefield on this potential new challenger team that well fell apart for whatever reason or maybe he was just playing GBs with them for um, well you know just for fun basically and as Machilla says scrims with John in place of Llama God so it seems like his chrome points out John is scrimming with Machilla, Noisy and Gunsy. That's going to be the team that he's running with right now. So maybe the whole team with Aches was never going to be a thing in the first place. But yeah, this is where John is resigning at the present time. How will things develop going forward? I will try and do my best to keep you guys updated. So a couple of months ago now, Sib got confirmed to the Atlanta phase as their substitute for the season. Pretty tough being the substitute on phase, right? Because I mean, what are you realistically going to do? Are you ever going to actually get your opportunity in the starting team? But it is at least a good, uh, well, a good move from the branding perspective for Sib but um, you know you guys might remember last season they had that 2k or whatever exactly it was up against the Chicago Huntsman and uh, well he said some words on stream he then got kicked to Atlanta phase then he got bracket brought back into Atlanta phase we talked about that at the time it was a uh, well, pretty interesting turn of events but now he is back on the phase team and well yesterday he was playing some eight series with Crim6 and some other pro players and certainly a guy that's well pretty much the top tier of the amateur squad I think we talked uh, the, a few days ago the West Star team where that West Star squad that Paul X was potentially going to be stepping up to the London Royal Ravens team for that kickoff classic and if he had dropped out of that squad if Paul X had left that team then supposedly it was Sib who was going to be stepping into that lineup to fill in the gaps right as Crone talked about in this article so Sib certainly next up really in the amateur scene and if there is an opportunity on a pro league team then you'd imagine Sib gets it but with the Atlanta phase substitute situation as it is it's pretty tough for him to go anywhere else and more than likely he'll just be stuck on the sub bench for quite a while longer at this point point. and I heard there were some discussions with Sib to get onto some other teams in the pre season before everything even kicked off but players didn't necessarily want to go down that route they weren't too keen because I think they see Sib as a little bit like a bit of a cocky amateur type player that um yeah maybe needs a bit of maturity and a bit of molding to be a pro league caliber player I think that's a lot of people's perspective in the in the least the professional division of the scene and Crimson clearly well maybe shares this opinion as right here in this clip we're going to look at in a second that oh well they're playing an eight series and Crimson is saying to this guy look don't switch weapons that's not what you meant to do as a flex but oh well Sib fires back with saying look I'm a flex player I I can effectively do what I want. My flags, what you mean? My flags? Yeah. <laughs> what you mean? If I'm gonna use that, I'm gonna, if I want to use it, I'm gonna use it. Like what? No one does that. Do that. Like what? Oh yeah, and that's why you're. Okay, no, okay. No. Hey. Jesus Christ, dude. Wait, you're still getting guns. You're getting guns. Nah, I think I might chalk it, bro. Nah, bro, nah, bro. This glorified <laughs> league play, dude. <laughs> God Bro. damn. <laughs> you mad? You mad? And, and, and you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy, you know what's crazy is your f***ing eights team right here is probably better than your actual team, bro. Like, you probably think, you're like, damn, this feels nice, dude. I can use whatever I want. I mean, I always use whatever I want. Like, what? Dumb. I always use whatever I want. Why are you so mad? Yeah, yeah, you don't <laughs> so care. Bad. You don't care, You don't care, so right? Bad. So you don't bad. care, right? So but you, bad. Bro, you so invest, bad. You, you invest so mad. half of your life into this. And then oh, you're gonna act, and then you're gonna act like you don't maps, care, bro. You are a f 
bomb. Why would I act like I don't care? You, so with some of the discussion here on the Reddit, aren't flex players kind of supposed to switch between an AR and an SMG, depending on what is more beneficial for the team? Yeah, Crim Six's argument was that nobody does it in the CDL. Truly weird. Looks like he was just looking for a reason to get mad. Apparently Envoy does it on scrims on Checkmate as well. And then while Scumpy always runs SMG, does it on Checkmate. So maybe depending on the map, who really knows? Uh, yeah, it seemed like their team was probably getting fried and Crim Six was looking for a reason to complain. But uh, yeah, this stuff, it never ends right. Like Crim Six goes between cycles a bit like super calm level headed with his team he seems to be like that and then there's some of these eight series who will just like blow up and uh, well go off on the main stage one time so pretty entertaining stuff to keep your eyes on and of course speaking of the Dallas Empire I put a poll out yesterday on, on YouTube just because I saw this YouTube video and it said that uh, the polling system in the community tabs are completely busted right now and if you do that they'll get like way more traction and people that don't even see your channel will start seeing these polls so I thought I would just give it a go and it did get a fair bit of traction but what I asked was okay Dallas Empire Optic Chicago and obviously I know what the answer is going to be. That's just how the Optic fan and you know the, the state of the scene works. Optic are always going to win those type of polls. But I thought it was an interesting question. Optic Chicago versus Dallas Empire at the present time. The two teams, the only two teams to have won 3-0 in their opening weekend matches. If they were to match up right now, who would take that victory? Right, I think it's an interesting question. The polling, of course, was always going to go one way. But yesterday, they were scrimming each other once again. So it was, uh, well, my boy Ronnie LFC 98 points out once again on the Reddit right here. Scrims versus Wester and the Dallas squad. So Wester team, they will not necessarily demolish them as one of the hard points. I mean, Optic right now are clearly, I think, in my opinion, the best hard point team in the entire game. I think they struggle to lose a hard point no matter really who they're playing against. They managed to lose one against Dallas here on Garrison and even on Crossroads, which has typically been a pretty questionable map for them in terms of hard points. They actually won this one, right? And I think there was some discussion about, okay, if Optic Chicago are going into pretty much any series, it might be Crossroads, the map that they ban out in the vetoes. But here, well, they're clearly playing it to still some decent success. So scrims against Dallas went pretty back and forth. It was, uh, well, the the control, it seems like to me that Hardpoint, the best team in the game, is Optic Gaming. The control went the way of Dallas, apart from this raid map, which it seems Optic may have won. But uh, yeah, apparently they were frying, but both teams were looking insane. They didn't get the opportunity to watch these last night. But a 4-3 map count on the whole to the Optic Chicago team. Pretty interesting, all things considered, right? A pretty damn close map set once again. It seems to me that Hardpoint, the best team in the game, is probably Optic Chicago in that game mode. The best team in control is probably the Dallas Empire and then we've got to answer the question who's better in search and destroy something which we really haven't had the opportunity to see yet and I think that would be the difference maker if these two teams matched up I think if these two teams do play each other at some point which isn't going to happen anytime soon unfortunately because the entirety of the first stage or at least the first three weeks of the first stage they're in their groups and Dallas decided to put Optic Chicago for good reason into Atlanta phases pool but um, at the end of that stage you'd imagine that if Dallas and Optic are still the best teams in the game as I imagine they quite well will be, then they will likely match up at the stage one playoffs, which is going to be an exciting thing to keep your eyes and how things develop going forward. But if these guys did match up right now, I'd imagine that Optic certainly have advantage in both of the half points. If they win both half points, I think that Optic win the series something like 3-1. But um, if they don't win both half points, then I can definitely see if Dallas win one half point, I think they're probably favourites in the series because I can certainly see the control favouring Dallas. And also, I think the search and destroy on paper, Dallas might be slightly stronger, but it might be an incredibly close match. I really don't know which way this would go right now. We talked about FaZe yesterday and uh, Mutineers, of course, also looking very strong in a number of game modes. So a big questions right now, but whenever these guys do match up on stream and scrims or anything like that, it's always an entertaining affair. And I'm intrigued to hear your thoughts down below. Right now, if these guys matched up, who would you favour in the game? Because given Dallas are the reigning world champions, it seems to me pretty difficult to look past them at the present time. Just one final thing to finish off the video. I thought this was pretty entertaining. So efuse.gg tweets the following out. The $10,000 nameless boomer bash is here this Friday 5 p.m. Eastern time. Eight teams with three retired pros plus one current pro. So Cold War CDL variant four versus four. Best of five single elimination brackets. Which retired COD pros do you want to see playing in this? So well, we'll have to see how things going forwards. Partnered, of course, with Bam Moon Talent and the Mutineers. So I don't really know what any of the teams are going to be yet. I imagine, I mean, Jacob's been around there a little bit. I think Enable was doing some tweets about it. And well, partnered with Bam Moon Talent, I imagine you can get a lot of the guys that are under that organization. I think Jacob are, especially the Oak Boys are given for Sento is a well one of the founders of this talent organization so intriguing to see how this goes going forward it could be a pretty entertaining tournament to keep your eyes out for ten thousand dollars on the line three retired pros plus one current pro that's going to be entertaining hopefully they get damon karma barlow in there to absolutely smoke up the competition i'm sure it's going to be a good time to watch some more entertaining call of duty action just around the corner enjoy to hear your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section but i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did enjoy it i'd greatly appreciate a like on the video it really helps out the youtube with the
and uh, you enjoyed this content. A lot of people like you may enjoy this content as well. And I'm growing the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you for watching as always. Take care. And I will see you next time. Pick up the, pick up the I'm, I'm, I'm close to the streaks. Streaks. Right man, right man. Pick up the, 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 pick up the,